What's up all you seekers of physics knowledge or you just need some help with some angled projectile problems. This video is intended to just basically help you with the setup of your standard angled projectile problem. This question has been left very vague, like just pretty simple. There's an object thrown with a speed of 20 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees from a height of four meters. Again, like, is this a really tall person throwing from four meters above the ground? Uh, are they standing on a ladder and throwing? What is this, what is this object? It's so, so I don't, I don't know, it's an object. Is it a book? Is it a ball? Does it start with the letter B? Because that's apparently where my vocabulary is limited. Anyway, I've wasted enough of your time, but I have questions and I need to entertain them while making a video. Bottom line, this 20 meters per second is at an angle of 35 degrees. Therefore, it is not 20 meters per second to the right or 20 meters per second straight up. It is a combination of to the right and up in this case. So it has a velocity in the X and a velocity in the Y. And since X and Y are independent of each other, we must analyze them separately and use a little trig perhaps to break this hypotenuse of a triangle up into its horizontal and vertical vector components. Sounds so fancy, but you have the hypotenuse. Can you find the two sides of a triangle if you know the angle? Let's get after it. Since X and Y are independent, we make a chart of X and Y. In the x, I'm listing vx. I'm going to leave a little space here for a reason, delta dx, delta t. In the y, I'm doing initial vertical velocity, leaving some space here, final y velocity, uh, vertical acceleration, change in vertical position, and time. Now, because we're doing this on the surface of Earth, I assume, unless this object is, I don't know, somewhere else, it's a very vague problem. Who wrote this? It's terrible. But let's assume it's on the surface of the planet, our planet. We know the vertical acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know that the horizontal acceleration is zero. And if this is AP, the way we've set up the variables may look a little different in AP. But it's okay to set it up this way if you are in my AP classes. I mean, it's just there's no horizontal acceleration, so you could just use V delta D delta T for constant velocity. All right, we've talked about this in class, so I'm not gonna go over it in too much detail here, but the change from horizontal projectile problems is that you're gonna write initial velocity cosine theta because the Vx here is adjacent to the angle and we know the hypotenuse. Hey, that's called cosine. And in the Y, we're gonna write initial velocity hypotenuse sine theta basically because we know the opposite side we're looking for the opposite side in this case, we have the hypotenuse and the angle, so we're gonna use sine. Some people skip this step here where I've actually written it out algebraically, but that can be useful. Like let's say you know the angle, but you don't know the overall initial velocity, the VI. Well, if we had a way of finding the initial vertical velocity and we knew the angle, well, hey, then I could just use this to get the overall initial velocity. Sometimes writing that out is one less puzzle piece that you have to keep in your head. So let's do a little math here. Let's get to this problem. Let's not make it too complicated. I've basically already showed you the setup. So I'm gonna just sub in some numbers. We have 20 meters per second. This is why I left the space here. Cosine of 35 degrees. And I get a, a speed of 16.4 uh, meters per second per second. And in the y-axis, I'm going to write 20 meters per second, sine 35, and I get a speed of 11.5 meters per second in the vertical. We also know that this projectile, um, well, it doesn't say it, but let's say it reaches the ground, which is four meters below where it started. Remember, by now, you should get a little bit more comfortable with the fact that it starts here and ends four meters down. That's gonna be negative four meters. From here, we could do the standards. I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just gonna solve for the horizontal distance traveled, but to do that, I need to get the time. And what a surprise in the y-axis, we're gonna be using math rep number three, like we've done already with horizontal projectiles. Change in vertical position, initial, vertical velocity times time plus one half 
vertical acceleration times time squared. Now with horizontal problems, this was pretty straightforward. Yay, the, the initial y velocity was zero. It's no longer the case. So let's fill in what we know. We have negative four meters, and this is 11.5 meters per second times time, plus one half acceleration times time squared. All right, this, if I rearrange it, let's see what it looks like if I rearrange it. I'm gonna bring everything to one side and it's gonna look like negative 4.9 meters per second squared times time squared plus 11.5 meters per second times time plus four meters, because I added the four meters over, equals zero. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a quadratic. God, I'm a loser. All right, anyway. This is your a x squared term. This is your b x term. And this is your c. Instead of x squared, it's t squared. So don't let that bother you. So we have a quadratic. And if you have not programmed your calculator at this point with the quadratic uh, program, I don't, I don't know what your problem is. I've, I've posted videos. I've told you to do it. And you're like, no, I don't, I don't feel like doing it. You need to do it. Get it done. I, I use the quadratic and in your calculator, it should be asking you like A and you're gonna put in negative 4.9, B and you're gonna say 11.5, C and you're gonna say four. And it's going to spit out two times. Uh, one of them is 2.65 seconds and the other is negative 0 0.308. Yeah, we don't go back in time. Uh, not that I'm aware of anyway. So that's the time it takes for the object, which we still don't know. What do you want this object to be? You have to let me know. If you watch this video, you tell me, what is this object? Then I know you watch the video. Anyway, the time is the same for both. So this 2.65 seconds, it can go here, it can go here. And now that we know the time, we can solve for distance. And as per usual, in the x-axis, we tend to use math rep number one, which is just delta dx equals vx delta t. AP, if this is you watching, you're still gonna be using the one half at squared equation except a is zero, and guess what? You're, you're left with this expression. So it's okay if you go right to this, and I believe that AP scoring guides will allow you to do that as well. So delta dx equals, what's the velocity x? 16.4 meters per second times the time, which we got to be 2.65 seconds. Hold on, I gotta do some mental calculations, and Oh, wait, I actually legitimately do because I didn't write this down. Maybe this video will be edited. I seriously considered leaving that long pause in, but it was edited out. So I had to edit that. You didn't want to listen to nothing for a while. Anyway, I got a distance of 43.5 meters. I hope that's correct. And that's it. Woohoo! It's a basic projectile problem. Could we add other things like what is maximum height? Yes. Uh, that's going to actually be covered in another video. And could we add things like what is the final velocity when it reaches the ground by doing a little Pythag inverse, inverse tan? Yes, we could. Please see the horizontal projectile problem for that where that is explained. And that's about it. Let's do a quick recap, shall we? All right, so X and Y are independent when it comes to projectile problems. We know this. And, and we've supported this with experiments as well. So you make your xy chart. Uh, same thing as before, the vx is constant, so ax equals zero, and the, the vertical motion is in free fall, so your vertical acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, assuming that is on the surface of this planet. Now, since it's at an angle, and we're given the hypotenuse and the angle to find the other two sides, we use simple trig, cosine and sine. I strongly suggest that you write these two things in your chart, even if you don't have the numbers, like just an opening statement. All right, Vx is Vi cosine theta and Viy is V sine theta. Just write it. Because again, maybe you know the angle and the initial vertical velocity. And if you know that, you can quickly get the overall initial velocity. And uh, that's about it. Delta T is the same for X and Y, we know that. And if you're looking for another video about finding final velocity and angle, check out the horizontal projectile problem. If you're looking for maximum height, that'll be in the multi-part angled projectile problem video. And that's about it. I hope this was helpful and it will be my first official serious edit to a video, but still, 
I think this is worth three out of five stars. I'm not changing a single thing.